everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today for this demonstration of the newly expanded online public inspection file. I am Holly Sauer, Associate Chief of the Media Bureau. We hope today's demonstration will help to provide guidance to the filers and users of the online public inspection file. In January of this year, the Commission adopted a report and order that expanded the broadcast public inspection file from only broadcast television to now also include cable, broadcast radio, and satellite television and radio entities. This change shapes the new online public inspection file site that you will see demonstrated today. These changes will further the Commission's effort to modernize its rules to reflect that the way Americans obtain information in the Internet age. Placing this material online will make it significantly more convenient for the public to access information about how our regulated entities are serving their communities and meeting their public interest obligations. The online filing process takes steps to minimize the effort and cost of moving the public inspection files online. Those subject to the new rules will be required to upload to the online file only those documents that are not already on file with the Commission. For television broadcasters, the documents already filed in the broadcast public inspection file will automatically be transitioned over to the expanded online file database. To ease the transition to the online file, the Commission staggered the implementation dates. Starting on June 24th, cable systems with 1,000 or more subscribers, satellite providers, and commercial radio stations in the top 50 Nielsen audio radio markets with five or more full-time employees will be required to place newly created public inspection file documents in the online file database, including any political file materials created on or after January 24th. These entities will then have six months to upload all existing public file documents, with the exception of the existing political file documents, which are exempt from the upload requirements. Very small cable systems with fewer than 1,000 subscribers are exempt from the online public file requirements. Radio stations that do not meet the criterion I just mentioned and small cable systems with between 1,000 and 5,000 subscribers will have until March 1, 2018 to begin using the online file, although they may begin to use, start using the online file earlier if they so choose. With the exception of the correspondence file, Entities that have fully transitioned to the online file are permitted to cease maintaining a local public inspection file as long as they provide online access to backup political file material, be it the entity's own website, if the online file database becomes temporary unavailable for any reason. Now, a few housekeeping notes before we start. First, for those that wish to view the demonstration in a higher resolution than this webcast will provide, you can use the WebEx to use the presentation that will be signed for that is available on the same page that you um, logged into to sign in for this event. Um, second, the demonstration will be archived on the Commission's website for viewing after this presentation. Please give us about a week or so to get it up onto the website. We will be taking questions via email during this presentation at livequestions at FCC.gov. Please do not send your questions via WebEx. We will not be answering questions that way. We will only be answering them at livequestions at FCC.gov. We will be reviewing the questions as they come in, and we will answer them at the end of the demonstration. We will also be including some of your questions in the commonly asked questions on a FAQ page that will be on the online file database once it launches on the 24th. For those here in the audience, we will be taking questions at the audience microphone, but we ask that all questions please be held till the end of the demonstration. Uh, we promise to get to as many questions as we can at the end of the demonstration. We highly encourage anyone that's having issues with the online file to contact our help desk at 1-877-480-3201. The staff of the help desk is trained with assist filers and users. Um, or to properly route questions that they are unable to answer at that time. Before I turn the demonstration over to Uma, I'd like to thank all of the staff that have worked very hard to make this expanded online file a reality. I would especially like to thank the project team, which includes several members of the Media Bureau, 
the Office of the Managing Director and contractors from the Information Technology Center, including our project manager, Uma, who will now provide the demonstration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Uma. So we'll be going over the screens. Uh, for those who are participating through the back, uh, you'll be able to follow along. <coughs> On June 24th, we'll launch the system, and the system will be available in this URL, publicfiles.fcc.gov. There won't be dash demo. So we'll be able to go to publicfiles.fcc.gov and then click on the sign in button. So I'm going to walk through the different service types. Um, TV, FM, AM, cable, SDARS, and DBS, how you'll be able to log into the public file to manage your profile. To log in, there's a two-step process. First, you should be able to log in to the owner dashboard using your FRN and password combination. If you're not sure which FRN to use, you can click on this link, which FRN to use, and then enter your entity ID. So I'm entering entity ID 47904 and click on FRN search. It would give you the FRN to use for this particular entity ID. Once you get the FRN number, you copy that and enter it in this box and use your FRN password combination to sign in. This will give you a list of facilities associated with the FR number. So this dashboard will provide the information about the different facilities associated with the FRN, the entity ID, the service type, and the community, channel number, access token, which I'll talk about a little later, and passcode information. This is the passcode that you'll be using to log into the online profile management system. This is actually, I am viewing a TV owner dashboard. On June 24th, um, there won't be a major change between what you're using currently on station access.fcc.gov and this new system. Everything remains the same, and we will automatically uh, move over all the files that you uploaded until June 20, uh, 23rd uh, to the new system. It will be available automatically, and there won't be any changes to your current username, password, or passcodes. So this dashboard also has access to the history of all the facilities. So you'll be able to select a particular facility and then load uh, the history for that facility. Also, there's a recycle bin. You'll be able to restore and purge files, and the purging op option is only available under the owner level dashboard here. Now I'm gonna sign out. In order for us to um, manage the profile, you have to log into the entity profile. So now I'm going to use the entity ID and the passcode that I collected on the other screen. And make sure to select the station type, the appropriate station type. So now I'm going to select TV and the facility ID and passcode. Once you log in, you'll be able to see all the options available for you to manage your profile. On the top navigation, under Manage Public Inspection Files, you have all the different components that need to be maintained for the public file. As you can see, we have pulled over the files uh, that are uploaded into the broadcast public inspection file. This is only applicable for TV. All the files will be available in the new system on June 24th. Currently, this is a demo system. We don't have all the files pulled over, but on the production system, you will see all the files. On the very first page, you are seeing the basic station information. You can click on the view license authorization to see the PDF of the authorization. 
and we provide additional information such as licensee address, main studio address, and closed captioning contacts. And there is also option to download the mirror archive right here. This will download all files that you've uploaded to the public file so far. If you click on any specific um, component, for example, I'm going to class A TV continuing eligibility. You will see the upload button, new folder, and this folder zip archive. So if you would like to collect the archive files specific to this component, you can download it here. And then you can create a new folder and upload documents right here. So I'm going to create a new folder here. Under this folder, I'm going to upload new documents. When you click on Upload Documents, you'll be able to drag and drop up to 15 files at a time, and each file can have up to 15 megabytes. And we accept PDF, Document, RTF, XLS, and TXT files. So I'm going to drag and drop a few files here. Once you drag and drop all the files, click on Start Upload. Now the upload has been uh, done, and now I'm going to go back. And you'll see all the files that are converted to PDF files. So that's the upload process. Under political files, the files are organized by the political year. And once you go into the year, there's different types of um, races. And you will not be able to upload to these folders, what we call system folders. But once you go into a specific folder, for example, federal and president, you'll be able to upload right here. So some of the folders are restricted, so you'll not be able to upload there. That is done for organizational purposes. And some of the files we automatically pull from FCC databases. For example, the application from deleted materials. These are automatically pulled for you, and if you feel that these files are not applicable to the public file, you can automatically um, click on this switch to take it out of the public file. And that's the TV um, public file components. And the other options available are history, You'll be able to see when you've uploaded a particular file, or deleted a file, or renamed a file. All of these actions can be seen under the history option. Under recycle bin, you'll be able to restore any files that you've already deleted. Like I already mentioned, at the entity level, you'll be able to restore a file. At the owner level, you'll be able to uh, permanently purge the file. Under settings, you can change the main studio contact or closed captioning contact. Previously, to change this information, you had to go to VPD system. Now, uh, you can change the closed captioning contact right um, in the system itself. And you can manage the station logo. You can upload PNG, JPEG, and uh, GIF files. And access token. So all the features that you've seen here so far, we've created APIs, application uh, programming interfaces, APIs, and we've used our own APIs um, to build the system. If you would like to use the APIs to manage the profile yourself, or you would like to give access to a third-party consultant to manage your profile, you'll be able to generate the access token right here and give it to them instead of sharing your username and password. This will enable the third-party consultant or uh, your developers to manage the profile through the APIs. 
I'll walk you through the APIs a little later. And that's the purpose of the access token. Under developer, we have the documentation available for the API, all the APIs that you can use to manage your profile. I'm going to sign out. So to review the process, for TV entities, there's a two-step process to log in. One, logging to a Warner dashboard. You have to use your FRN password combination to get the list of facilities. And then select one of the facility ID and use the password displayed in that screen to log into the entity profile management screen. And that's a similar process for FM and AM um, entities. So now I'm going to log into um, log into an FM facility. As you can see, the structure remains the same. On the top navigation, under Manage Public Inspection Files, you will see all the components that need to be uploaded for the FM entity. And history, recycle bin, settings, developer, and FAQ. On the very first page, you'll see basic information about the station itself. And you have the option to download the mirror archive right here. And similarly, political files is organized by the year. And then once you click on the year, you'll get the different races and you'll be able to upload the documents right here. Similarly, applications, we bring all of the applications relevant to this facility area automatically. If a particular application is not applicable to be kept under the public file, you may uh, switch this off. We also generate the contour maps. for all um, FM, AM, and TV entities. We bring EO records from CDBS automatically. Any application that we bring uh, from FCC, you'll be able to turn it off if it's not needed. The other components are listed here. The donor list for NCEs is only applicable for non-commercial educational channels. So um, if it's not applicable, you don't need to upload it right here. All the other options remain the same, like what we've seen for TV. The history shows the um, history activities. The cycle bin, where you can restore the files. And settings, you'll be able to change the main studio contact and upload a station logo and you'll be able to generate your access token right here. The only difference you see between the TV um, screen and this one is actually a banner on the top right here. By default, on June 24th, all TV entities profile will be visible to the public by default. But entities other than TV, like FM, AM, cable, TBS, and s -Dash, you would need to specifically switch on this um, switch for the public to view your filing. So I'm going to show you how that works on the public side. So for example, this is the public view of the system. And if someone searches for 47904, it directly goes to the profile because the TV entity has already transitioned to the online public file. So they'll be able to see this on the public side. But if they were to search for the FM entity, for example, 54459, it would show the screen. This 
entity has not yet transitioned to online public file. So this is what the public sees until you turn on the switch. So I'm going to turn on the switch for now. And you have to confirm that you are now uploading to your online public inspection file all new public and political file material on a going forward basis. So I'm going to confirm. So I turned on the profile now. As you can see, the profile page now automatically went to the settings page. Now you see a certification tab. I'll uh, get to that uh, momentarily. Now on the public side, I'm re reloading the page. The public can now view the profile. So this is the public view of the FM profile. Now, once you turn on the switch, you are confirming that you are uploading all new public file material. And the certification tab is to certify that you have, you have uploaded all existing public file material required to be included in the public inspection file. So once you certify, so the public, before you certify, the public will see this banner on the top that you have confirmed that it is um, uh, the entity is uploading online public inspection file, all new public and political file material on a going forward basis. Once you certify, you have to certify a name. Uh, now, This message has changed to confirm that it has completed uploading all existing public file material required to be included in the online public file. So that's what the public sees. So that's the only difference other than the TV um, entity. So to review again, I'm signing out. To review, for FM entities, the process is similar. The login process is two-step. You have to use the FRN and password combination to get a list of facility IDs. So similar to TV, once you go to owner dashboard, you'll be able to select the station type. And if you don't know which FRN to use, click on the which FRN should I use link and enter the entity ID and get your FRN. And once you log into the FRN dashboard, you'll be able to select the facility ID and passcode combination to log in here. And once you log in, on the top you'll see all the components and the other options are available under history, recyclement, settings. And make sure to turn on the profile. Because I turned on the profile for this, it's, the bar is not available anymore. But make sure to turn on the profile as soon as you're done uploading the new materials. And once you're done uploading all materials, make sure to certify under settings tab. That will enable your profile to be viewed by the public on the public view. Now the process is very similar for AM entity also. So I'm going to quickly log into AM facility. As you can see, this entity has not transitioned online, so um, you see the bar right there. And all the components available for the AM entities will be displayed in this top menu. And all other options remain the same. History, recycle bin, settings. And the settings, you'll be able to <coughs> change the main studio contact. <coughs> and station logo and also you'll be able to generate the access token and the certification tab will only appear once you turn on the profile and similar to TV and FM entities we also bring the applications related to the facility and the contour maps and the year records. The developer
paper um, documentation is also available on all menus. So that covers TV, FM, and AM entities. Now I'm going to log into a cable entity. Similar to TV, AM, and FM, logging into a cable profile management is also a two-step process. First, you need to sign into the owner dashboard using the calls ID and password combination. Make sure to select the station type as cable in this menu, in this drop-down. And if you're not sure about your calls ID, then you can actually use your PS ID to know the calls ID combination. So for example, I'm going to use this calls ID. So I'm going to log into this calls ID for now. So make sure to select the station type as cable and use the calls ID and the password combination. This will bring all of the PSIDs associated with this calls ID. And it is right now, because I'm logging in for the first time, it is generating the passcodes for all the PSIDs associated with this calls ID. So as you can see, the owner dashboard is very similar to TV, AM, and FM. You will have the PSID, legal name, access token, and passcode available for all the PSIDs associated with this calls ID combination. Um, as you can see, there's hundreds of PS, PSIDs associated with this ID. So you can actually filter by PSID. It would filter the list and show you only that PSID. You can click on the remove filter to show the remaining ones. And this is also available in TV, AM, and FM uh, profiles. You can download the passcodes and access tokens for all the PSIDs right here as a CSV file if needed. This will be particularly useful if you're going to use the APIs. And the other options remain the same you'll be able to load the history of all actions for all of your entities associated with this um, calls ID. And you'll be, you'll be able to see the recycle bin and FAQ. Again, this is the cable owner dashboard. I'm going to sign out. Now I'm going to log into a specific uh, PSID. Again, make sure to select the station type as cable and enter the PSID and use the passcode combination that you obtained on the owner level dashboard and click sign in. Again, on the top navigation, you see under Manage Public Inspection Files all the components that need, needed to be uploaded online for this uh, particular piece. Of and History, Recycle Bin, Settings, and Developer, FAQ. The top navigation remains the same across all service types. On the home page, you see ba basic information. There are a couple of um, information that we need to upload um, before you can turn on the profile for the public to view. For example, you need to enter the zip codes served by this PSID. You need to enter the uh, values, the comma separated values right here and click on save. And below that we display the community served. And the 
mirror archive download file is also available here. In addition to the zip code served, in order for us to bring in your EEO records, cable entities need to enter the employment unit IDs here. If you're not sure how to uh, enter the employment unit ID, you can search using the pub CDBS public access um, search page. So for example, for this particular piece, I'm going to enter the employment unit ID 12681. I have a couple, so you can use the comma 12683. Once you enter the employment unit ID, we will automatically bring all the EEO records that you filed in CDBS under these employment unit IDs. If you feel a particular file is not necessary to keep in here, you can click this switch and keep it out of the public file. Now the public won't see this file anymore. And that's the only different information um, than the TV, AM, and FM. Because the year records are not directly associated with PSID, we are associating the employment unit IDs here. And similar to AM and FM entities, the bar to turn on the profile is available on the top. So you need to be able to turn on. And the difference here is you need to enter the principal head and information and service area zip codes um, before you can turn on the profile. So make sure to enter that information. That's because on the public view, we use the zip code information to search um, a specific PSID. So I'm going to certify that and turn profile on. On the settings page, you have different information here. So you can enter the principal head and information here, or you can certify that the address is kept in local file by selecting this option. If you select this, you don't need to enter any address information. And the operator address can be modified here. And you can upload the man, uh, station logo here. I'm going to show you a sample. So it updates immediately. And you can also generate the access token or deactivate the access token here if it's already generated. And because I turned on the profile already, the certification tab is available to me right now. So that's the cable entity login. To recap, login to cable entity is also a two-step process. First, you need to be able to log into the own dashboard using Coles ID and password combination. Get the list of PSID and passcode information there. And then sign into entity profile by using your PSID. Make sure to select a station type as cable and enter your PSID and passcode combination here. So all the profiles are managed by PSID. Once you log in, make sure to enter the zip code information as well as the principal head and information before turning on the profile for the public to view. And once you uploaded all existing file materials, you can certify um, using the certification tab. And for EU records, please use the CDBS public access to search for the employment unit IDs and enter the employment unit ID so that we can pull in the EU records automatically for you. And now I'm going to log in to a DBS station. For DBS and SDRs, the login is only one step process. So you can use your FRN and password combination directly here. There is no owner level dashboard. So I'm going to log into Direct TV. Use the FRN and password combination. 
and on the basic info page we show the licensee address information and under <coughs> manage public inspection files these are the components and we bring in the EO records automatically if, it, if there's one filed on um, CPDS and the other options remain the same history, recycle bin, settings you'll be able to manage your license the address right here and you'll be able to upload your station logo and generate access token on the settings page. Very simple interface. Sign up. Again for DPS entity the login is only one step process. Use your FRN and password combination to manage your profile. Similar to DPS, SDAS is also one step process. I'm going to log into CDS. Same information. So on the um, top navigation, you have all the components to upload. And on our set settings page, you'll be able to manage your licensee address and you'll be able to um, generate the access token. To recap, for SDARS, CDS, um, the login, step, uh, login is one step process. Just use the FRN and password combination to manage the profile. Now I'm going to walk you through the public view. So the public can search um, for the call sign or the PS PSID. Um, for cable entities, we search by PSID or you can enter the zip code. For DBS and SDARS, you may enter the name of the entity. For AM, TV, FM, um, you can enter the call sign, channel number, or the network affiliation. So I'm just going to enter a keyword right here, DI. which will bring me the matching TV stations FM, AM, cable, SDARS, and DBS. If the profile is already turned on except for TV, everything will be automatically available. If the profile is turned on, you can go directly to, if you click on this, you'll be able to view the profile. If it's not turned on, this is what the public will see. I'm going to show you the TV entity. The information is organized slightly differently um, on the public view. On the left hand side, you see the icons, the uh, round icons here gives you the station information, applications and related materials, ownership reports, and um, EU records, contour maps, political files, children's TV reports, and more public ins inspection files. Below that, you have a quick view as well as the uh, history. So once you click on a specific component, you will see the different tabs that we saw on the entity side. Like I already mentioned, if a particular file is turned off on the entity side, the public will not see it here. EU records, political files organized by the year. which is hopped out here and um, you can click on the more public inspection files to see the other components for example I see 23 files upload under issues and programs list you can go there to view the files the quick view gives the document approach by the, and the calendar like older uh, earlier this month earlier this week yesterday and today 
and the activity history only shows the upload activity for the public or if you moved a particular file from one folder to another folder we will see it right here the public will not see uh, the history of deletion or um, purging so that's the public view and we have given the documentation of the API on the public view as well because if you are passing this to a third party consultant they don't need to log into your profile to get the documentation they can get the documentation right here and as I mentioned before we have published all the APIs that we use to build this, um, build this system um, in this page and certain APIs need access token to be able to get the information wherever you see um, for example the same search that I um, did on the public view I can do that using this um, keyword search API it will give you the data in JSON format and you have the option to select the JSON or XML as the output for the API most of the APIs are available to public also um, so you'll be able to build the public view of the profiles yourself the access token is only needed for those APIs to update the information or manage the profile for example to be able to upload the zip codes for your PSID you need access token to be able to upload files for example under the file manager there is a file upload API you need access token here or um, you can do all the other operations uh, file operations like rename, move, restore um, all the operations delete all of these operations need access tokens and that concludes the demo of the public health system now we can take questions how to bring over existing files into the new system. Can you go over, go over that again? I'm concerned with political files that already exist in the current files. Can I bring those over with one click or file by file as we did previously? Um, this is a TV entity. For TV entity, there is uh, no action required. Um, we will automatically bring in all the files from uh, the station access um, system. So it will be available on June 24th <coughs> automatically. Only for the new public file materials you need to upload to the new system. And um, I would like to remind that all the URLs, if you had bookmarked uh, stations.fcc.gov or stationaccess.fcc.gov, we will automatically redirect those URLs to the public publicfiles.fcc.gov. So um, you don't need to change any URLs on your site. I have a question uh, as we transition to online public files, what are the retention requirements for existing physical files? There is no change to uh, retention requirements. Um, they will remain the same. Um, the requirement is just to put materials online instead of retain them physically uh, in your local public file, uh, except for existing political files, which um, may do not have to be posted online. Um, I have a question regarding the URL. So 
So this system, what I'm showing right now, public files dash demo dot fcc dot gov is available right now for everyone to test. And on June 24th, the URL would be public files dot fcc dot gov. Again, public files dot fcc dot gov slash admin would be the logging URL. And then another question on the same email, how do I get the facility ID and passport for our station? Who has that information so that I can begin uploading the information? Like I mentioned um, uh, before, you have to first log into the Warner dashboard using your FRN and password combination. And if you're not sure about the facility ID, uh, you can use CDBS to enter your call sign and get the facility ID for that call sign. And then enter your facility ID here. So for example, I'm entering the facility ID 47904 and click on FRN search. This will give me the FRN, pass, uh, FRN that I need to use to log into the Warner dashboard. Use this FRN and the password for that FRN to get the list of facility IDs associated with that FRN number and uh, collect a password from that screen to log into your profile. Um, will broadcast radio stations with fewer than five full-time employees be permanently excluded from having to post a political file online? Uh, no. Um, smaller stations are um, uh, exempt until March 1, 2018 from posting uh, any material online. Um, but at that time, they will be required to post uh, both their uh, public uh, files online and their political files online on a going forward basis. Um, the um, order does provide uh, state that we will consider waivers for very small stations. Uh, one add on note to the previous question. In this utility where you can search um, your FRN number, if you feel that this FRN number is not the correct FRN, please contact the help desk so we can correct it for you. Um, in most of the cases, 99% of the time, this is the correct FRN because we brought it uh, from CDBS using the latest filing that um, you have filed. Um, and if it's not the correct FRN, you can uh, contact the help desk. If a station employment unit includes stations that are assigned to a top 50 market and stations that are not assigned to a top 50 market, do the stations that are not assigned to the top 50 market have to begin to upload documents to the online public file in June? The answer is no. Um, uh, the uh, requirement depends on the market that the station is assigned to. So uh, there would be a different requirement for stations uh, outside the top 50 market. Um, other question about, are we still to use the LMS system for filing the children's programming reports? Uh, yes. Um, online public file only brings in the information from LMS um, automatically. Uh, you don't need to file it again on, on online public file, but you do need to file the children's programming report on the LMS system. And this new public file system is for our quarterly issues and program support, commercial limits, um, children's programming, PSA reports, etc. Et like the former system. Yes, the new system is exactly the same system as the um, old one except we have made some improvements. Some of the um, tasks that you needed to contact help desk before, you can do it right now um, on the new, new system yourself. Those are the improvements that we made. Um, other than that, the system remains the same and all the components, components remain the same and you need to file it in the online public inspection file. So we're not changing if a, if a particular uh, report has to be filed with the commission this new system doesn't change that requirement. Anything that is filed here, such as your Form 398 Children's Television Report, gets filed with LMS now, and the FCC will import those documents to the online public file. It's not that you have to also file them in the online public file. Anything that's already on file with the Commission, the Commission itself will import to the online public file. So the documents that you'll be uploading are documents that are not normally filed here, but that have to be retained in the public inspection file. Um, I had a question, uh, how soon will public file updates need to be made? Um, generally, uh, we, and then also, uh, 
uh, if something is, uh, that they think needs to be in the public file, that the commission would normally import to the public file is there, what should the state do? Um, we ask that um, you look at your public file, and if you see something that is missing that you think the commission should have put there, please contact the commission and let us know. Uh, um, but, um, uh, uh, otherwise, the deadline to post things to the public file is the same as they are currently. So, children's program report, for example, you have a 10 day window to put those in the public file, and that's not changing. I have multiple questions about the TV station's online file. Uh, we will be automatically bringing all the documents, the existing documents, from BPIF to OPIF automatically. Yes, we need to be only concerned about the new filing. Um, and other question about sharing the FRN password to a legal station. The login process is two-step process. You need to use the FRN password combination only for the first time. So once you get the facility ID and password combination, you don't need to share that information with the individual station. You'll be able to share only the facility ID and password combination to the individual station. So I have a couple questions about specific items. Um, one uh, uh, station wants to know what to do with EAS reports. Those do not have to be in the public file, so um, that's not something uh, that is changing under this new system. Only put in the online public file things that aren't that are currently required to be in the public file. Um, and then uh, ownership reports. Uh, somebody's asking whether they will automatically be updated by the commission, yes, if anything is filed here, uh, uh, we will import to the public file for you. Um, contour maps also, uh, we will be creating and putting in the public file for um, um, both AM and FM stations. Uh, the question about will the data be entered prior to June 24th under cable domain, or will this have to be reloaded once the system goes live? Um, yes. The system that you are seeing right now and you are using um, public files that demoed at fcc.gov is only a demo system. And um, you can see on the top, nap, um, top bar we have stated that you have to re-upload the files once the system goes live. And any files that you've uploaded as part of the demo system is not going to be there um, in the live system. So I have a question about what has to go in the online file. Um, Larger stations, and this was a, a radio question, uh, stations that are required to commence using the online file as of June 24th, and that is commercial radio stations in the top 50 Nielsen audio markets with five or more full-time employees. They will start putting new public file content in the public file starting June 24th of this year. Um, they will have until December 24th, that is six months, to upload their existing public file material. But no one is required to upload existing political file material. Uh, if a uh, station wants to do that, they may, but it is not required. The retention period for the political file is two years. So after two years, you will have no existing political file material that isn't, has been put in the online file. So you will not have paper political files uh, after the two-year retention period has uh, expired. Uh, right now, my TV station maintains a link to our SSC public file on our website. Will that link remain the same after June 24th, or do we have to change the link? We highly recommend you to change the link if possible. Um, if not, we can automatically redirect uh, that link to the new profile on the new system automatically. Um, to remind again, it would go all the way to a high level profile. For example, it would go to um, publicfiles.fc.gov slash tv dash profile slash wrctv to that level. If you had linked a specific file in your political in your public file, we won't redirect that URL. We will redirect that URL, but it would go to that higher level homepage of the profile. We had a couple of questions about the, uh, the effective date of the uh, online public file. It is June 24th, not January 24th. A couple of people uh, were confused about that. Um, another
another question I got. Um, the presenter says that a station should certify to the public file once all the old material is uploaded, but it sounds like the process of turning on the public file and certifying the public file is linked. So um, let me explain that again. Um, you turn on the public file when you have commenced using it on a going forward basis. You can turn it on, and you can't back that process up. So once you start using it on a going forward basis, toggle it on, and you have a deadline to do so, but you are also permitted to do it early if you prefer, not before January 24th, but a station that is not required otherwise to comply until March 1, 2018, could elect to start using the online public file early. Once you decide to do that, you start to must upload um, all uh, current material on a going forward basis and you toggle the uh, public file on. But um, for uh, entities that are required to start using the public file June 24th, they have um, they, that is for, on a going forward basis only. Those entities have six months in which to upload existing public file material. Once they have done that, they would certify that they have uploaded their existing public file material. So there are two different um, uh, 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 requirements here. The toggle on switch that shows them using it on a going forward basis, and then for the entities required to upload starting June 24th, certify that you've also uploaded all your public file materials. Question about entity ID. Um, the entity ID is essentially the same as special TID for TV, AM, and FM entities. These are questions on the political file. Do you need to upload all orders booked up to and including November? Uh, the requirement only is on a going forward basis starting June 24th, 2016. Uh, this was something I think was confused about the January date. Uh, do we include all the canceled orders with revisions? Whatever has to be in the political file starting June 24th is what has to go in the political file on that date. I manage files for four stations owned by the same company in one market. Will I need to log in for each station I manage, or will there be one login for the group? Um, yes, there will be login for each station that you manage. There will be uh, four different entity IDs and password combinations. Um, for radio stations, somebody wants to know what the requirement is for uploading letters and emails from the public. Those, uh, and that would be television. Both commercial radio and television stations currently are required to keep in the public file uh, letters and emails from the public, but those cannot go in the online public file. Um, the commission um, issued a, 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 an NPRM um, a few weeks ago um, uh, proposing to eliminate the correspondence file requirement for commercial broadcasters, but that was just a proposal. It's not has not been adopted yet. So for now. Uh, Letters and emails from the public must be retained by commercial radio and television stations, and they cannot be put in the online file. They must be retained in the station. Um, multiple questions in this one email. Where do I get my ID? Um, again, I believe this is uh, regarding a cable um, entity. So um, you need to be able to um, use either your PSID or Colts ID. Um, you need to know one of these IDs. Um, make sure to log into calls if you're a um, cable entity. If you're a TV entity, you can use CDBS to search for a uh, facility ID if you know your call sign. Um, the passwords you're using automatically generated or do we get to set a password? Um, in the two-step process, if you're using FRN, that's the password that you created in course system. And if you're using calls ID, that's the password you set in calls system. And the passcodes that you use to log into individual um, entity are actually generated, automatically generated when you log into a specific owner level dashboard. Uh, you will not be able to um, change the passcode, but you will be able to regenerate to a different passcode if needed. 
and one more question the same email once you certify and activate the file to the public um, online can that be undone unfortunately no uh, once you turn on and certify um, it's permanent there is no looking back uh, somebody is asking about the deadline for for NCB stations of the radio uh, in the top 50 markets. No NCB station is uh, required to comply with the online file until March 1, 2018. They may elect to do so voluntarily before that date, but there is no requirement uh, that they uh, uh, start online filing until March 1, 2018. Uh, the 50 uh, top market deadline applies only to commercial stations. And the deadline is that on June 24th, commercial radio stations in the top 50 Nielsen audio markets with five or more full-time employees must commence using the online public file. Um, all other stations are exempt until June 2018. I think this is a two-part question. Um, I have my channel, channel lineup um, on our website. Um, can I upload a link to our website instead of uploading? Um, channel lineup on their website can be uploaded the URL to their website. Yes, you can put um, the um, yes. Will the cable company be able to put a link to their own channel lineup on the online file site? Yes, they will be able to do that. Another question. I just logged into the demo and found stations associated with my apartment that are no longer licensed to us. How can I ensure this is corrected? Please contact the help desk. Um, so this is, um, I'm going to try to answer this and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So for cable on June 24th, they will need to load all zip codes uh, on that day, turn on the public file on that day if, if they're in the group that has to go on that day, yes, and have it, any new political file information start loading. So the political file requirement for cable is that um, on June 24th, uh, cable systems with 1,000 or more subs have to start complying on a going forward basis with the online public file. But cable systems with between 1,000 and 5,000 subscribers are exempt from the political file component until March 1, 2018. So, um, those smaller cable systems do not need to start uploading political file material until March 1, 2018, but they do need to upload their other public file material. What is the URL? Again, um, if you would like to test the system today, you'll be able to um, go to publicfiles-demo.fcc.gov and click on the sign-in um, link on the top. Again, it's publicfiles-demo.fcc.gov. If you would like to test the system today, um, it will be available until June 23rd. Um, on June 24th, the URL will be publicfiles.fcc.gov. Publicfiles.fcc.gov, and then click on the sign in link. That's you. And then I have a question about um, children's programming uh, materials that have to be in the online file. Um, starting June 24th, uh, you would start to upload that information on a going forward basis. But uh, any existing materials that um, from prior to that date that have to be in the public file, you have six months to put that material in the public file. Um, can you please elaborate on the download file archive button on basic information tab? Does that provide ability to download all files on the site to a personal drive or folder? Yes. So it will give you a zip archive of all the files that you've uploaded so far into the public inspection file. Um, how will having an online public file impact our in-person public file responsibilities as a broadcaster? Is this a replacement or a supplement to our paper public file maintained at our primary studio and available for viewing by the public? Um, uh, if for the moment, for commercial stations, uh, they must continue to retain uh, letters and emails from the public in their local public file. But, um, and, and no broadcast station has to put, or any entity has to put their existing political file material online. So those things uh, can, uh, stations and other entities can elect to retain local public files uh, if they don't want to put everything online. Um, but we do encourage uh, entities who are 
encouraged you to put all materials online. I think it would be easier for them, and, and um, uh, they will get fewer requests in person to view any of those materials. Will there be step-by-step -step instructions on how to navigate the system in writing, and will there be a list or a key or legend for the abbreviated terms? Uh, we will post the recorded video of the um, webcast uh, webinar, um, and there are FAQs available in the system under the FAQ menu. For radio stations that must have PF content in place on June 24, when can we begin to upload material ahead of the deadline, or will it be a huge push for all stations on June 24? Um, going forward on 624, and you can start on 624. We've gotten a couple of questions about uh, translator information. Um, there is no public file requirement for translators. Um, and, uh, and another question is, will AM maps show both day and night patterns for directional stations? And uh, I'm told that they will show day only. On the FAQ page, it says that the Commission makes available the ability for an entity to directly mirror its public inspection file from the Commission site. How do we go about getting that done, and what link do we use on a website to direct the public there? Um, you can see uh, sample links from a couple of TV station websites already, um, or you can actually search for your call sign or the PSID. Once you, for example, I'm going to do that right now. So search for a call sign um, or an entity ID. Once you arrive at the main profile page, that's the URL that you will be using on your website to link to this profile. Again, um, on June 24th, there won't be dash demo, so it would be publicfiles.fcc.gov slash TV profile slash WRCTV. That would be the final URL uh, for your profile. That also depends on basically um, the service type. For example, if you're searching for a cable entity, then um, the URL would say cable profile and then the PSID. So this page would be your uh, final link for your profile. One uh, political file question, uh, if there is a buy that was purchased in May that runs until November, does that need to be uploaded to the online file? The answer is yes. How are we to get previous quarterly issues documents in the online public file? Um, for TV entities, we will bring all the documents automatically to the new system. There is no action needed. How do you upload one document to multiple PSIDs? Um, so this has to be done through the API. You can automate um, the upload using the API. So you'll be calling the API multiple times for those PSIDs. Can you review where the certification tab is for FM, AM? Um, yes, you can. So <clears throat> once you log into an FM station, if you have not turned on the profile, then the bar will appear right here. Once you turn on the profile, you have to go to the settings tab and the certification will be the last tab on the second page. And that's the certification. And somebody is asking to actually upload a file. Um, yes. So I can show you quickly one example. Um, I'm going to go join to this agreement and upload documents. Click on that button. You can drag and drop files or you can um, Click on the Add File. So 
select bunch of files. We allow up to 15 files at a time. So once you uh, selected the files, click on Start Upload. And as soon as you see the success, you can go back. You'll see the files uploaded um, in the list here. And you have to wait for the status to be converted so the public can, until the status is converted, the public will not be able to download the file. That's the upload file. Thank you uh, for uh, watching this and um, uh, if you have any further questions please uh, contact us.